In this video, I'm going to look at activity four, which is the structure testing for Marleypool College. Let's have a look at the activity. We need to test the structure and the validation of your relational database using suitable test data. That's normal, erroneous and extreme as appropriate. You must provide evidence of table level testing that proves one, a record for a player will not save without the player's date of birth being present. Two, a record for a player will not save without the player's initial in the correct format. Three, a record for a player will not save if the player is assigned an invalid mentor. Four, a record for player statistics will not save if the player rating is below the accepted range. Five, a record for player statistics will not save if the player rating is above the accepted range. And six, a record for player statistics will not save without a valid position. We're going to provide all the evidence for activity four on a test log. And this is activity four template, which will be provided to you in the exam. Please make sure you save your test log as a PDF in your folder for submission using activity4 underscore registration number underscore surname underscore first letter of first name. So here I've got open the test log. Just a reminder that we need to say what type of test each test is. N normal R erroneous X extreme. If X extreme is used for the testing of a range of values N obviously for normal data that's accepted, therefore anything that's left over that isn't accepted is R and erroneous. We need to make sure that we screen print the evidence and it's included for all tests and that screen prints are readable and referenced to the test. We know if the actual results column's not wide enough, we can add the uh, images of the results to the end of the test log, but you need to make sure that they're clearly labelled as to which test they belong to. And please do not carry out any testing other than specified in the activity requirements. And you can delete rows off the test log when you've finished if you've got any spare at the end, which you probably will have. The first test a player uh, sorry, a record will not save for a player without the player's date of birth being present. So I'm going to complete the test data column, the expected results, and put in the screen prints. I'm going to leave till the end numbering the tests and putting in the type of test because I just find that a little bit easier and quicker to be able to zip through at the end and put those in. It's important when you're creating your test data that you include test data for the whole of the record in which you're testing. So we're testing here that the player date of birth is blank, but we need to say what the player ID is. In this case, it's auto number. So it's fine just to put that. The mentor ID we're going to use, the surname that we're going to use, and the initial, and sorry, again, saying the player date of birth is blank. We then state in the expected results column what we expect the computer to do with that test data. So in this case, the record will not save, player date of birth must be present, and the error message will be displayed. Player date of birth must be entered. We then enter all that data into our database and take a screen image of what's happened. So you can see here, we've got the player ID automatically generated, Aspinall A, the date of birth's been left blank and the mentor ID is two, and it's displaying that error message that the date of birth, birth must be entered. A record for a player will not save without the player's initial in the correct format. In the test data column, we're going to state exactly what data we're going to use in the player record. So player ID will be auto number, mentor two, surname Acton and initial. I've said it put in a nine, it shouldn't accept that and put in the lowercase a and then the player date of birth. 
results column, write down exactly what you would expect the computer to do with that data. Data entry will not be allowed if nine is entered. Data entry will be forced to uppercase A, A uh, if A is entered. Again, go to your database, enter that data into your play record and take an image. It's a little bit strange evidencing a input mask because you can't show an error message that it's not being accepted. So all you can do is show that what has been turned into a capital A when we've entered a lowercase a. The next test a record for a player will not save if the player is assigned an invalid mentor. So in the test data column, player ID, auto number, mentor ID three, there isn't one of those in the mentor table. Surname Ahmed, initial A, player date of birth uh, 21006. In the expected results column, state what will happen when you key that data in. In this case, the record will not save. Three is not on the combo list and does not exist in TBL Mentor and an error message will be displayed. Go to the database, key in the data that you've stated in the test data column and take an image. And so here we can see the player, Ahmed, A, the date of birth, and then event at three and it's come up with a error message. The next test number four, a record for player statistics will not save if the player rating is below the accepted range. So the bottom range was one, anything less than one shouldn't be accepted. In the test data column, we're going to use player ID 12, position three, player position yellow cards two, player position goals one, player position subs two, and the player position, I'm going to use minus one here, which should come up as an error. In the expected results, write exactly what the computer will do with that data. So in this case, the record will not save. The player position rating is less than one. The error message will be displayed and the player rating must be between one and five. In the data, that we've said here in the test data column into your database and take an image and show that error message being displayed. So we've got player 12, position 3, counts 2, goals 2, player subs 2 and minus 1 and it's showing the error message. The next test record for player statistics will not save if the player rating is above the accepted range. In the test data column then, again we're using player ID 12, position 3, yellow cards 2, goals 2, subs 2, but this time the rating is going to be 6, which is obviously above 5, so the error message should display. Write exactly in the expected results column what the computer will do with the data when it's entered. In this case the record will not save. The player rating is more than five and the error message will be displayed. Player rating must be between one and five. Key the data into your player position record and show all the data. So that's player 12, position three, two yellow cards, two goals, two subs and six for the rating and the error message displayed. And then our final test, the record for a player statistics will not save without a valid position. In the test data column then, we're going to use player ID 12, position 9, yellow cards 2, goals 2, subs 2 and a rating of 5. That player position, number 9, doesn't exist, so that should come up with an error if we try and enter that into a record. In the expected results column then, state exactly what will happen with that data. The record will not save. Position ID must be listed in the combo box. Nine doesn't exist in TBL position, so the error message will be displayed. You cannot add or change a record because a related record is required in TBL position. Enter this test data into your database. Take an image, and here we've got player 12, position 9, 
two for yellow cards, two for the goals, two for the subs and a five for the rating. And of course that nine doesn't exist, so it's displaying the error message here. So the next thing I've done is gone through and put the type of test on for each test. Basically, with no normal data, it's not asked in the task to show normal data. We're only showing tests that are asked in the task. So they're all are erroneous, apart from the test where we are testing the rating that's between one and five. So they're X and all the others are R. And then finally, we just need to go through and number these tests consecutively from one to five, six, seven, what, however uh, number tests you've got. So I've just gone through and numbered these, one, two, three, etc., all the way down to the end. Just the final thing to remind you about is the final column in your test plan. You only need to complete this column if the results are not as expected and then you would be asked to explain the error and if you can correct the error and explain what you've done that would be absolutely fantastic and include some screen prints or images to show what the problem was and the corrections that you've made. That completes testing for activity four. They recommend you allow 20 minutes for this activity uh, and you can see I've completed this. You should be able to achieve this quite easily in 20 minutes and that's providing you've done the practice and you know exactly what to write in the test plan before you go into the exam. It's all about practice, practice, practice. You'll get quicker and you'll complete the tasks, the activities a lot quicker. In the next video, I'll be looking at task five or activity five, and that is all about evaluation.